So today we're looking at my favorite all-time system in Asta C64. I'm going to be going through some file extensions with you. Bit of control set up in how to enable the virtual keyboards to get you through certain games which is asking you to use a keyboard. Sometimes your physical keyboard don't work so I'm going to make sure you do know how to use that. I'm also going to cover some video settings and just generally get you up and running with some real cool classic Commodore 64 games as well as some modern ones so check this one out. Okay, so before I start this setup guide today, just make sure you hit notifications and also subscribe to my channel if you like what you see. You'll get content as I upload it and release it, and it helps my channel out a lot. So we're talking about my favorite system today, that's the Commodore 64. So I'm a personal Commodore 64 fan since 1990, and I'm still here in 2023 enjoying that 8-bit Marvel. So what we're gonna do is look at file extensions first for games so in my commodore 64 folder just here i've got a couple of games and we've got my favorite game which is flimbo's quest and we've also got a more modern game uh, robot jet action which came out about a year ago and you can look at the latest commodore 64 games either at the Cytronic website or itch.io website and also check out my playlist uh, come to think about it i did a lot of gameplay videos on uh, modern recent homebrew c64 games so anyways you'll notice with commodore 64 games there are several different file extensions so what i've got just here is flimbo's quest and that's a dot d64 uh, dot d64 is a floppy disk image so it's a fairly quick loader and the other one i've got is in a dot prg that's a dot program and that's pretty much instant load uh, talk about instant loads the commodore 64 had three methods traditionally of playing games software so you have the cassette deck or the data data set you add the 1541 disk drive and you also add the cartridge expansion on the back so if you think about it the cassette player was obviously the slowest loading method of playing games or loading software the disk drive was um, a lot better but of course the cartridge expansion was by far the quickest so the dot tap images which you might see try to avoid those because they are extremely slow to load um, you come across these and if you can then just get a dot d64 file extension a dot program or even what's called a dot crt so dot crt is a cartridge image so i've got my commodore games and what i'm going to do next is open up retroarch and first thing i'm going to do in retroarch is grab a core for this so if i just go down to online updater and if i go to core downloader we just scroll down until we come to the Commodore section, and there's plenty of it here. Now, the one I recommend on RetroArch is a Vice Core. So, Vice is actually a standalone emulator, which I've covered on my channel in the past, being a Commodore 64 geek. Vice is by far probably the best. So, what we're going to do is download Vice, and the one I recommend is the one I'm highlighting now, which is Vice times 64 fast. If you just download and install this core, I've already done it. It's got a hashtag on it. So once you've done that, what we're going to do is just come back out. And just to test this is working, I'm going to go to loads content and I'm going to look for my games. So C drive and they're on my desktop. So I'm going to go to users and my computer is called Jamie and desktop and here's my games in the commodore 64 folder so i'm going to just quickly test out robot jet action because it's a dot prg and that was going to be an instant load and suggested core so we obviously don't want atari jaguar uh the one i've just suggested is this one which is vice times 64. I'm <laughs> 
So I'm using my PS button on my PS3 controller just to come into this quick menu and as you can see it's got a really good image and the reason that is is because I've changed the video settings so if we just back out of here and go into settings what I'm going to do is go to video first and what I've done here is just enable some scaling so integer scaling on your end when you're setting this up will say off. And as you can see in the background now, uh, by turning this off, it's going to be a bit more pixelated and the screen is going to be bigger. So we're also going to change this one back to 4 by 3 which is the original Commodore 64 aspect ratio size. And if we just quickly go back now into the game, you'll see it looks a little bit different. <laughs> So what I'm going to do next then is just show you how to actually import these Commodore 64 games into RetroArch. So we're going to go down to import content, manual scan, and what we need to do first is select the content directory, and that's where our games are on the computer. So content directory, they're on my C drive. Now if you've got an external drive connected, then it might be another drive. I'm going to go to C drive. I'm going to go to users and then Jamie is the name of my computer and from here I'm going to go to desktop and Commodore 64 scan this directory and if I just go right to the bottom here and start scan if we back out you can now see Commodore 64 has appeared at the bottom which is pretty magical stuff <laughs> so let's look at this I've just imported these and I've got my game running in the background and I'm going to try Flimboost Quest this time, which is a .d64. I'm not going to edit this, but you'll see in real time how slow a .d64 file extension is compared with that of the .prg. I've got a robot jet action. So let's run Flimboost Quest in .d64. So same core and run. Okay, so I'm going to just quickly introduce you to the virtual keyboard we can use on this Vice Core. If I press select on my PlayStation 3 controller, 
we're going to get the virtual keyboard to come up. And I'm also going to make a note here. Um, if some of you Commodore 64 fans might be aware, most games were programmed to use joystick from port 2. So if you find you're playing a game and your sprite or your character or whatever doesn't move, then we just go to Joy P. And if you just press, say, your fire button, or in my case, X button on that, that changes ports. So obviously, Joy Port, that's what that stands for. So let's just back out of here. And I'm going to press select again. And I'm using my D-pad to uh, use this trainer. Uh, if some of you are unaware what trainer is, it's pretty much a cheat system. So infinite lives, no. Infinite time, no. And so on. And I'm going to just go to start game. So once this one's actually booted up, I'm going to just go through some more settings with you, controller settings, and I look at the video settings again. So as you can see, Flimbo image is actually working just well. It just takes a little bit more time uh, loading that with um, the .z64 I'm using. So what I'm going to do next is just go into some controller settings with you. So we're going to back out, uh, go to main menu, quick menu. And from here, if we go down to controls, port one controls, just make sure if you're using a traditional, you know, uh, conventional joypad or controller like i'm using my official ps3 six axis just make sure device type is set to retro pads for this and also we need to make sure port 2 controls are also set to retro pad uh, like i was just saying most commodore 64 games even modern c64 games are all programs to work from port 2 so just make sure those are both selected for retro pad so for your video option side of things, what we can do is in main menu of Retro Arch, if we go to quick menu and we just scroll down and go to core options and just go down to video from here. And this is all your video options. So we got a VIC2 filter. And for those who use uh, into Commodore 64, you'll know that VIC2 is the graphics chip. So if we enable this for the PAL emulation VIC2, it's gonna give us a custom horizontal blur. So feel free to experiment with something like this. And if we go down to the VIC2 color palette, we can actually change the different color palettes uh, from a range of different platforms, which emulates Commodore 64. For example, we got CCS 64, which is a Windows emulator. And if we select that one, we could change it to that color palette, which CCS 64 uses. And if we go right to the bottom of the video, we also got color depth and you can change the color depth to millions, which is 24 bit, which is obviously going to enhance the colors that we see, but it does require a restart as it says. And if we back out of here, back up to the top with system and where you see RAM expansion unit, there's certain games for the Commodore 64, especially some modern games such as the Sonic the Hedgehog port from the Master System. It's going to ask you to have a RAM expansion. So if we go into RAM expansion unit, uh, that Sonic game asks, I'm pretty sure, for 512 kilobyte RAM expansion module. So if you've got one of these games, just make sure that's selected. And if we go to Jiffy DOS, what Jiffy DOS does is speeds up the disk loading process. So the game I've just loaded, which is a disk image, a .d64 image, if we put the Jiffy DOS files into the RetroArch folder, which is under system and then the vice folder, uh, your games on D64 will likely run a lot faster. And finally, if we go back to the settings menu and if we go up to video 
once we're inside video, just go down to scaling. And from here, how I started the video, I had integral scaling on and it reduces the size of the image, but it looks a lot sharper and it's not so pixelated once you've got this enabled. And from the scaling menu, we can also go down to aspect ratio, which we can play around with the settings. Now, if you put this to 16 by nine, the game looks a lot more stretched, obviously. So I find that by using full, it's a little bit better. And if I back out of here and go to settings and video again, scaling, if I turn integral scaling off, and that's what I'm saying, 16 by 9 ratio really stretches the image of Commodore games. So for this reason, in most games, I would probably recommend putting this to 4 by 3. And if we just go into the RetroArch quick menu again, we've also got the ability to save and load save states on Commodore 64 games. So for example, I'm gonna just save where I am right now, save state. And if I go back into RetroArch menu and go to load state, Okay, and say you've got a Commodore 64 game, which has many different discs, something like Newcomer, which was an early 2000s game. If you've got multiple discs for a certain game, under Quick Menu, you can go to Disc Control, and the current disc that you'll be running to, say, start the game, just simply go to Eject Disc. And once that's been ejected, you can then go to Load New Disc, and you can then select, say, your disk 2 or disk 3 and so on. So that's the way around loading disk games, multiple disk games for Commodore 64. And obviously, once you finish with all your configurations, I always recommend go into main menu, configuration file, and just save current configuration because you don't want to do all that work to find you go back into it and uh, nothing saved. It's really annoying. So that's it for my Commodore 64 and RetroWatch setup guide today. Uh, like I said at the beginning of my video, if you like what you see in this setup guide, just hit notifications and subscribe to my channel, just Jamie, so you don't miss out on upcoming Retro Arch content as well as RetroBat and several other front end systems and standalone emulation videos that I do. So also check me out on social media. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. But until next time, stay retro.